Welcome to TIFF College's um, orientation. I want to um, say that we're glad to have you here, and I want to say congratulations to all the parents who got you here. Um, and today we're just going to do a quick orientation, um, and then we're going to have advising appointments. Okay, so I'm Dr. Sharon Augustine. I'm the chair of teacher ed. I also am the advisor for all the middle and secondary students. Um, if you're a holistic child, Dr. Keith Berry will be your advisor. Um, but um, I'll be doing, I've done your schedule, Dr. Keith and I have worked on those schedules together. Um, we'll be showing you your schedule soon, but I wanted to go over some things and take questions before we split up for advising appointments, okay? All right, so we're gonna start off um, with um, introductions, and we've already introduced ourselves beforehand, so we'll skip, we'll skip that part, um, but we'll go straight to your advising network. So we're gonna talk about your advising network, we're gonna talk a little bit about the degree programs that we offer because we've done a lot of curriculum development this year, so we've got some new things to talk about. Um, we're also gonna give you some highlights of new student information. I know you've heard probably a lot in the opening session, but we have a few things that I just wanna make sure um, that you um, look at carefully. And then we'll just go down to my office and have an advising appointment, okay? All right. Um, okay, so there's something called Starfish that you're gonna be connected to, and it will show you what I'm showing you right now and it's called your advising network. And your advising network in the College of Education is going to be myself as the chair, okay? You're gonna have an advisor, and it might be me, or it might be Dr. Keithbury if you're a holistic child, okay? Then the, um, above me is the associate dean, Dr. Reffitt, okay? So she's over all undergraduate education. And then Ms. Russell, who is our certification officer, and she's also the director of candidate program Progression. So she does all things through the Georgia Professional Standards Commission to get you certified at the end with the state of Georgia. So you work with her along the way. Um, in, in Starfish, you'll also have a, a link to your financial planning advisor, okay? And every semester, your, your advising network will grow according to what classes you're in. So you'll also see all your professors, same kind of information, so that you'll be able to con contact them. So it'll all be in one place. So if you, you are not sure, who do I call? I wanna ask about the TEACH grant or I wanna ask about some kind of, I heard somebody had some sort of scholarship, I wanna see what that's about. You can call, look up your financial planning person. So, and you're assigned to one person. So that gives you um, a person that you can talk to, you know, and who will know who you are and know your situation, okay? All right, so these are, this is helpful. So now we're gonna look at some of the undergraduate degree programs. This, I love this picture over here on the um, right side of the screen because it's Ingram High, it's right across the street from elementary school. And our um, NIA, our um, student organization, Mercer Educators in Action, worked with United Way and some other stakeholders in the community to get that school a playground. They didn't have a playground, it's not included in funding when you build a school. Um, so this school had been without a playground for a long time and they helped to get one. So I just always love to point out that picture. And these other pictures are just in class, students in class, so, okay, we can go to the next slide. All right, so we have, right now, we, we technically have three degree programs. Right now, we're, this semester, we're only starting cohorts in two of those degree programs here in Macon. Uh, we've got the BSED and Early Childhood Special Ed, and that certifies you in grades pre-K through fifth grade. You are certified early childhood special ed, and that doesn't mean you're a special ed teacher, it means you can be a general ed teacher, and you can also be an inclusion teacher in a general ed classroom. You can't have your own, um, your own special ed classroom. Um, so that is a very popular program. The other program that is just starting this semester, this year, we've always had this, but we've never had it as a standalone degree. It's always been a minor, but it had the same credit hours as a major. So now we've made it official that it's a major, um, is a BSED in secondary education. And so what you do is you get a BSED through us and you take your content classes through CLA. And these are the areas that we certify in. Biology, chemistry, physics are our science areas that you can get certified in. Mathematics, English, history, and political science. And so you'll take those courses um, with the College of Liberal Arts. We also have a BSED in middle grades education but because we've started this new program and we think that's gonna be the program that we um, stick with here, we're, do, we're um, just holding off on starting people in that track. And so this, semester, this year we won't have people starting in the middle level education, okay? 
All right, so here are the things we're going to cover. We're going to talk about financial planning. All of these slides are going to be made available to you, so you don't, if you, if you want to take pictures of the slides, you can, um, but we are going to make this available to you. I've sent this to, to um, at the orientation team, and they have it. So, Okay, so we're just going to go over some of these things, so we can start. All right, so financial planning, I felt like this was very important for you to have. I know um, both students and parents want to be able to, you know, access information and know if they, you know, what's the FAFSA cutoff, you know, when do I have to have that in, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm, I've got this slide for you. It's got a Macon number, and for those of you who are out of state, it's got a national toll-free number. It's got a toll-free within Georgia number. They even have text messaging, which I didn't know until I looked at their website. They even have it where you can text them if you have a quick question. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do an in-depth question there, but if you just had a quick question, they even have a text. They have facts still. Um, and then our school code I put at the bottom in case you needed that. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to talk about two things next. The first thing is just immunization. You know, you've got that form. You need to get it turned in. Um, the information for the Student Health Center is here. It's over in the med school um, if you need to see someone. Uh, during the year. Uh, they have a fax number. Um, I would try to get that taken care of today and if you don't just keep in touch with them and make sure that gets turned in. The other thing I want to mention is CAPS, Counseling and Psychological Services. As part of your tuition there are many things that you can take advantage of. One of them is CAPS. I've had great success for students who became and this is this is not a um, this is a service for anyone who's a student at Mercer. So I've had I've had students who have used this um, when they have been going through difficult times emotionally um, for personal reasons, and some have become stressed because of a big course load. You know, there's all range, and some have had depression or anxiety that has developed, and we all know that this is the time period for people when they're in, from high school through, you know, early adulthood. It's when if you're gonna have depression or anxiety issues, um, happen, that's when they start to surface. So this is a great resource um, for students and for faculty you know, to refer you to. So I just want to make sure you know that's available and that's part of your tuition. Um, the Dean of Students is Dr. Pearson. Um, this is not a picture of him. These are students. <laughs> um, I just wanted you to be aware of his office. He handles um, all things, um, I would say student affairs, handles just about everything. I mean, that's where um, We'll walk out on Cruz Plaza and there'll be, I don't know, what, sometimes like laser tag will be going on or, you know, so they do a lot of fun things like that. They have very, a lot of seasonal programming that they do, um, but it's also the place that if you have a problem, say with, um, you know, anything that wasn't academic, that would be the office that you would go to see. Uh, the library is an underused resource. Um, this, the library here, um, Ms. Rhodes, it, um, Ms. Theresa Rhodes is the um, liaison that we work with the most, most closely in the College of Ed. And Tarver Library, which is right next door, they have, it's not your, it's not the library that um, I remember from college because you can talk there, you can eat in there. Um, the, the first floor is a collaborative space where you can, they have um, tables and booths everywhere. They have um, study rooms where you can meet with meet with your friends and study, um, you can meet and do collaborative projects. They also have these big whiteboards that you can check out and you can push them around the library so that you can do, you know, your math problems. I've, I've been down there working and I've had a group of students who were working calculus problems right beside me, you know, in a group. So there are all kinds of resources there. The biggest resource are the librarians who are there. They will look at your papers and they will tell you if your citations are correct. They know all the different citation sources. They know Chicago, they know MLA, they know APA, so they'll be glad to look at that. And so that's something that I don't think a lot of students will go there for. I mean, you can go to the ARC, the Academic Resource Center, um, but librarians are a great resource. If you have some a research project that you're doing, you can go in and say, I have this research that I'm doing and I'm not sure where to start. And they will come up with a plan for you and they'll walk you through it. So they'll tell you databases to use. So the library, yes, people go there to study, to hang out, but it's there are people there that can really help you with your academic life. Okay, we have to feed the bears. So I just wanted to, um, we're happy that we have a lot of options here at Mercer. Uh, the library I was just talking about, Einstein's is in the bottom floor in the basement floor. 
Um, that's heavily used and really a really great place. They even have some study rooms in Einstein's where you can go and eat and still study. Um, up at the UC, the University Center up here on the top of the hill, there's a place people call Farm. I think it's really um, called Farmer's Market, maybe. I just call it Farm because I get that. But um, that's where you can get a salad bar, two soups, a hot sandwich, and, or, and then they also have another hot line that's usually a stir fry something. And then they'll have always have a smoothie, smoothie, and they have the best chocolate chip cookies on campus or at Farm. Other places, they're good, but they're the best up there. Um, so that's a great place. You'll see people eating there a lot. Then you also have the food court up there where you've got Panda Express and Chick-fil-A. You've probably seen that. Um, there's a little, I think, kind of pod market there as well where you can get snacks, kind of like a little convenience store. In the student center um, across Fruit Plaza, you'll see that they've got the calf. And so that's really the cafeteria where you go in, you swipe one time, and you go in the round and you can eat anything. And it's like every college cafeteria where you can get pretty much anything. You get pizza all the time, salad bar all the time. There's always a hot line, like a meet and three. Uh, Wednesdays are my favorite day to go to CAF because it's fried chicken Wednesday. Um, so that's a very, that is a very heavily populated CAF on Wednesdays. So but that's a great day to go. Um, they also have, um, you know, hamburgers. Um, you know, you can have like panini, grilled sandwiches, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's a great, that's really a great place to go. And then in the same student center, they have a little pod market, it's like a convenience store, and they have a witch witch, which is also really good. And they have, um, you know, coffee shop there. Um, that's all kind of one place and it's all together. Then there's Mercer Village, which is, you'll spend lots of times at Mercer Village. Um, probably um, Sauce is the pizza place. Z Beans just, just opened about a year ago. Um, it's a coffee shop and it's owned by a Mercer grad. Um, who started that business as a result of his work on a Mercer on Mission. So it's very interesting to go in there and read his story and see um, what that's about. Um, Frank Harz is a wings and chicken and like, you know, um, Southern cooking place where you can go if you want to get some good collard greens, you can go in there, that kind of thing. Um, Margarita is probably the best Mexican, I think, in town, period. Um, really great place. A lot of people go there to watch sporting events, things like that. Um, so there's a subway and then there's a new way and new way is a Macon version of the varsity if you've heard of the varsity in Atlanta it's basically chili dogs hamburgers that kind of stuff so that's a Macon institution new way is okay now do you ha if you have a cell phone I think you should get it out because I would like for you to put this first um, Merpo number in it and this is the Mercer police and the reason I have people put it in here is because I have it in my phone and I have had to use it you know, if you lock yourself out of, you know, um, a classroom or a classroom gets shut out, shut and you realize you've left your laptop in there. Merpo is really good. They'll come, they'll open the door for you. Um, I've used them on many occasions. I've also sometimes, right now, um, parking is amazing in the summer because not a lot of people are here. In the fall, there will be many more people here. And so sometimes when I come, I have to park far away from where I'm going. And then I leave late at night. So if I leave late, I might call Merpo to come um, and they might show up on a golf cart or they might show up in their cruiser and they'll just drive me to my car, you know, because I think, I think especially um, if you're by yourself, it's always better to just travel with other people. So I just think that's good to have in your phone. Okay, so the university has lots of portals and there's lots of ways that you're going to be contacted or you're, that you're going to need to log in and you have your MUID. Um, and you have your login information that you use, and I know you used it because I made your schedule, and because of that, you, um, I know you know how to log in, and all of these, um, except for uh, one of them, you're gonna use that same login information. So if you think of it this way, we now have, instead of saying we have Mercer Live, we're just gonna say that we have Office 365, and so you'll log in to, uh, you'll log in to your email, and it will give you your email, it'll give you a OneDrive, it'll give you all the Office, the Microsoft Office suite. So you'll have all of those things. So if you don't have those on your computer, you know, you'll have them when you get here. And there's also a way that you can download Office, um, all the um, Office suite stuff onto your computer and IT has that on their website. So that's one thing. And so that's your email, your OneDrive. So if you're working on a project with people, you could say, okay, I'm gonna upload our document and you work on it like a Google Doc. I'm sure Microsoft wouldn't mind me saying that, but that's basically what it is. Um, and so then you'll have all the office suite to work with. 
My Mercer, you already know about that, you've logged in. That's where you'll see your grades at the end of the semester. That's where you'll go to register next for, for your spring classes. You'll register yourself, so you'll go in and you'll be able to register. Um, I think there are also little connections where you can just click on something and get to your email and to Canvas. Um, Canvas is our learning management system, and it's just like if you've heard of Blackboard, it's just one of those systems where every time you take a class, it will generate a Canvas course for you, and the professor, and professors use it to varying degrees. So you'll have some professors who will just put materials in Canvas and say, go look in Canvas and get this syllabus, go look in there and get the readings. Uh, then you'll have other professors who say, oh, we're going to turn everything in through Canvas and we're going to put all, all the materials in there. So you'll have some that do some kind of hybrid of that. So you'll want to figure out which it is. If it's an in-person class, you still will probably use Canvas. If you take an online class, then everything will be done through Canvas. Okay. Um, the great thing about Canvas is we do have a program called Zoom right now. So if you needed, let's say you did take an online class, you would be able to Zoom with your professor, so that, that's kind of like a Skyping where you could just have a video chat with them, okay? So that's really good. Now, in the College of Ed, and you won't have to do this now, but you'll be buying a chalk and wire electronic portfolio, and you'll purchase that later, and that's just to aggregate ev everything that you do in your program so that we can show that you've met all the standards to become a teacher, okay? Oh, wait, I've got one more. Mercer Alerts. This is also something that I think that you should go to, and you can you go to my Mercer and you find the section that says to update your primary mobile number, and you can add others. So, like if, if you wanted to be connected, if a parent wanted to be connected to the Mercer Alerts, they could add it on their phone just so they could see what was going on. I mean, the Mercer Alerts that I can think of recently were, you know, we had some bad weather, so we had a tornado uh, warning. And so those are the kind of things you really want to have that Mercer alert for. And we live in a world now where you want to be connected so that you know what's going on on campus. So um, that's really good to do. And then the last thing that I added because some students said that they really did use it, there's an app called um, Mercer Mobile. It's on the App Store and it just says it looks like a big MU. And I think this is helpful because it connects you to pretty much all the portals that I mentioned. Um, but it also, and I think what people use it for at first, there's a map on there that you can use. And there's also, it has all the dining and it tells you what time things are open. And especially, it's especially helpful in the summer or on Fridays, like what time does the calf close today? Or is it, what times are, is it open on Saturday? That kind of stuff. So I think that is helpful, especially at first before you kind of get the lay of the land. Okay. So those, that's everything. I'm going to take any questions that you have, um, but and then we'll all go to my office and we'll have the individual advising appointments. Okay? No questions yet? Okay, great.